Right, so here we go. This is a <coughs> video log number two of Savant's Melodic Rock. Um, technically part two because I had a wee bit of baller with the microphones and stuff earlier on. But hey ho, here we go. Um, I suppose I should apologise first for the time it's taken to get video log number two done. Uh, had a wee bit of a situation last weekend, had to go to one of the uh, quote-unquote local Covid test centres. Oh no, I've said that word again. But, uh, fortunately enough, my test came back negative, um, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't realise at the time I was in for a, a bad case, uh, probably the most serious um, bit of food poison that I've ever actually had in my life. It was brutal. But um, we'll not go into the gory details of that, we'll just keep it in that and move on. Eh? <coughs> um, aye, so I mentioned in, in the first video log that I wanted to take this down there, the kind of technical, musical, uh, songwriting route, so that's what, that's what I'm going to do today, we're just going to get in a wee bit of that, and hopefully we're not going to be too long here, I'll try and make it as quick as I can, but bear with me. Um, Maybe you'll learn something, maybe I'll learn something. Uh, maybe we'll shake hands at the end of this, maybe we'll leave being mortal enemies. Let's find out. So, uh, aye, so, mentioned in the first video that we're going to talk about the songwriting aspect, so I'm just going to, this is the second video, so I'm just going to touch lightly on things, you know, I mean, the plan is um, <coughs> talk about developing a hook or a catchy melody. Um, Turning that catchy melody into like an actual full blown song as well, because it's not easy. Um, and then we'll talk about arranging songs as well, maybe in the next video we follow. Um, that's quite a tough part as well. Um, and then we'll get into the fun part, which is recording. I'll maybe take a couple of videos to show you me recording and my wee fancy setup here, you know, and some mixing as well. The mixing part's always going to be fun. Um, Apologise for the tiredness in my voice. It is uh, after 9 pm at night, shall we say? I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what time it is because it's, it's a Sunday night, uh, and I look forward to the joys of work tomorrow. So this is uh, <coughs> hopefully a video that will give you again, uh, or even the video logs will give you again a, a picture of, you know, just a. Just me being the small time musician that I am. Um, for a while I avoided even calling myself a musician. And I realised that was probably wrong. Um, just me being modest and and being too humble I suppose. Um, and, and it wasn't really good either for, for my perspective. Um, but aye. So just for a small homegrown musician's perspective. Uh, in contrast with, with the big music industry, uh, what they do and the difference between me writing a song or somebody like me writing a song and uh, how, a, how a big music industry song's probably written is a massive difference. So obviously I'm just doing this myself. Um, I've not even got a band. I even get a band to work on these songs with. Um, so I'm literally using these guys as my soundboard. Uh, hopefully that will work out a wee bit. If it doesn't, then I end up just um, embellishing, then fine. Uh, that's what happens. Uh, but I, um, a great example of the way that big industry works, and it's been like this for a while now, you know, I mean, decades. Uh, I always loved the, the famous story about... Um, Freddie Mercury and, and Michael Jackson doing a collaboration and they'd agreed to it, you know, it was, a, it was a done deal. So Freddie jumps into the studio and he's working on songs for days, you know, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe about a week later or maybe even a bit more ridiculous than that, Michael Jackson appears with Anne Faye songwriters um, and his pet llama and at this point Freddie's pissed off because he's pretty much nailed the full album, I think. Um, and he's done all the hard work himself, you know, put himself through the, the mill. Um, 
So ended up, I, th I think um, that album turned into Freddie Mercury's solo album. I think he'd probably just had enough waiting about, and that's kind of where I am. You know, I'm sick fed up with waiting about. So that's what this is about. But I'm not going to make this a rant. I'm going to try and keep it succinct because I don't want these videos going on any longer than 30 minutes a pop. I'm going to try and make this 30 minutes. Better I had a cup of tea ready. Got my wee cup of milk. Mm. Ah, can it be a wee cup of milk? Anyways, so what I'll do is I will, <coughs> let's see, I will launch my music editing software. Now, before we get to this, there's going to be really two main envelopes for writing songs. Um, probably more than that, but generally speaking, there's two big ones. The um, main one is the whole kind of, you know, lightning in a bottle thing, where you're walking down the street, going to the shops, um, or you're at work, or you're driving home to work, or driving to work, uh, which is worse. <coughs> and you get an idea for a song, and you're like, oh my god, I can't wait to get home and get this done. And you get home and you just work on it and it just wah, explodes. Um, sorry if you see me looking down by the way, I'm not really sure whether you look directly into the webcam because it's a bit freaky. Um, but I, you get an idea and it just it, it just grows. And <clears throat> that's the lightning in a bottle kind of envelope, you know, it's they're kind of few and far between occasions and if you get made off if you get them made off in the know then you know it's it's, uh, it's purely down to the divinity of the gods, you know, your luck with that. This song idea that I'm going to be showing you, this is merely the other envelope, so it's kind of, you know, carving something for, for stone um, into something that's a work of art. See, what happens with this is, you start off just noodling a bit on your instrument. Um, I'm a guitar player, so I just sit in the house and just noodle a bit on the guitar for a wee while, play a couple of chords here, a couple of chords there. Um, maybe do a wee kind of broken chord thing until I can get a nice wee melody out of it, whether that's on the bass note or whether it's in the higher notes in the chord. <coughs> so you come up with an idea um, and then you try and expand on it. So I'm going to be showing you um, the idea that I came up with um, and how so far I've managed to expand it. Now it's not a finished song. This is this is the idea of the video. It's just taking you through the beginning, taking you from scratch, and showing you what a work in progress looks like. And we're, hopefully, we're we're both gonna uh, just go the journey with this wee song until it's a full fledged song. So fingers crossed, we'll do all right. Pressure's on you, not me. So what I'll do is I'll do my wee magic trick here with my camera. Check this one out. And there we go. That's we me now. So <clears throat> this is the, the songwriting software I use. I use Guitar Pro 7. Um, you can probably see along the top there. I've titled this track the Benevolent, but uh, the Benevolent Benevolence. Um, <clears throat> we bit about naming ideas. So it's good to name an idea. Uh, so it's good to invest an idea or a concept into a song as well. So I think probably the the subliminal concept behind calling this the benevolent uh, the benevolent benevolence is probably I think I'm going to go with a theme with this one that it's like you know you, to be good sometimes you need to be assertive or to get a good outcome to get a positive outcome or a good bit of work done you need to be assertive and I don't know if it's just me you know. Uh, Type of personality I am. Um, assertiveness can. There's a fine line between that and being offensive, or you know, um, you always feel quite bad about something that you do, even though that the you get to the means uh, or the end. You know, it's the means that make you feel bad about it, even though you're not actually doing anything on purpose. It's, it's I don't know, bad against somebody. But that's the idea behind this this uh, theme so far. So what I'm going to show you is, let me see if I, I oh, don't want my left panel, I'll just bottom panel here. Now, 
you can see there's a, a ton of tracks down here, nine tracks. <coughs> so we've got a lead melody, two ensembles, left and right panned, that's just for a bit of a stereo effect. Um, ensemble two, some parts are an octave higher as well. I've got two acoustic guitar channels down here, um, two distorted guitar channels. Um, not got anything in the distorted guitar channels yet, so this isn't going to be the most rocky track um, at this stage. But that's one of the um, that's one of the stages of writing as well. We an idea. Um, it's not a purely guitar based idea, so the the kind of rock and roll guitars will, will come, but they're not there yet. I've got a, a bass. You know, I've got it as a synth bass in this track. When I'm recording this, I will record it with a bass, um, but I'll also mix it with the synth bass track. Um, so, and then I'll get the drum kit. So, what I'll do is I'll show you how it started off. So, this wee melody here, it's not really, not really much of a melody, but this is what I started off with. Now, I started sitting in the kitchen just playing guitar, um, playing this, and when I, when I laid it into this, it sounds almost completely different. Not exactly how how I thought it sounded when I played it, but that's not a bad thing. That kind of happens quite a lot, you know. Um, you're playing a nice sweet guitar thing, and then you put it into whatever audio, kind of songwriting program you're using, and then you listen to it back, and it's kind of like listening to it from outside, looking in, rather than uh, listening to it, listening to it from inside, looking out, you know. Anyways, I'm going to play it in a, and what I'll do is I'll solo it. And we'll just listen to it. So this is the this is what it sounded like when I put it down. Well, my wee idea. You, uh, I wouldn't call it a hook at this point. And it's barely a melody, but it's the the, the gift of a musician is has been able to visualise the I suppose the magic of these these notes. So I'll play this for you. So that's just a weak and a sway melody, you know. Um, the the chords themselves, um, we've got an A minor, an F major, A minor, F major, A minor, F major, A minor, and F major. Nothing special, you know. Um, I try my hardest to minimise the amount of chords I'm using in a song. Um, in general, I, I think you know in the West it's like even in pop music, it's that, that four chord rule, you know, four chord changes um, is about as much as, as anybody can handle in pop music and as hard as that is to come to terms with when you want to write a, you know, an amazing masterpiece, um, it's also good to, to restrict yourself, you know, and sometimes you you can be more creative with less, so can you push myself on this album to, to do that? Um, <clears throat> so that's the chord, A minor and an F major. Now what I've done with this was then I put it up an octave and I put it into here. This is this is melody one, a uh, melody part one. So I'll solo this and I'll let you hear the difference now. Where's uh, my solo button? There we go. So this is on the lead synth, which is a nice octave higher and sounds alright. So there we go, that's the, the melody. Um, an octave higher on a synth. And I, I think not just changing the octave, but changing the changing the instrument as well. Um, just gives you that wee bit more inspiration, you know. When I heard that on, on there, I was like, wow, this is a this could really go somewhere. So then what I done was I did uh, let's see, so I've got melody part two here. So you can probably see I've got melody part one. Melody part two, and down here I've got melody part three. Um, so what I've done is I just kind of ordered the initial melody. Um, so the first two bars of melody part two um, are a wee bit different, um, as you can maybe see there if you're in heavy sheet music. <coughs> so I'll play that for you, and you hear the difference now.
there we go, and then reality part three, all four measures are a wee bit different. So, in, uh, in melody part three, I believe it's a, an A minor, F major, C major, and then a G major as well. So it's four chords there, that's your four chords for all you pop fiends out there. So it's, it's about that G major, you can really hear it wanting to resolve back down to the, the tonic, the A minor. <coughs> and, you know, a, a lot of pop songs start these days um, way instant gratification. Um, I absolutely hate instant gratification and it really, really drives me nuts having to do a lot of this in music just to try and please people. Um, but I understand it's, you know, um, there's writing music for me and then there's writing music for others, so... Um, I, I kind of like to meet in the middle, you know, um, I like to push people's boundaries with music a wee bit. I think that their attention span these days is absolutely atrocious. Um, so I'm not going to give you instant gratification if that's, what you're, if that's what you're looking for. I want to string you a wee bit and give you a bit of dramatisation of the notes first, you know. Um, so that's the melody. Um, and then what I've done after that was added this here, the acoustic guitar rhythm, uh, which is basically just two chords at the start there. So I'll just swallow that so you can hear that as well. So we've got a A minor and an F, then a A minor and an F. So that sounds like this. So you can probably hear there, it's, it's nothing special, but it's got a wee bit of tension in it just with the, the A minor and the F. It kind of almost reminds me a wee bit of the, uh, some of the music from um, uh, <laughs> Batman, the animated series. Uh, there's a great composer in that as well. Uh, I'm trying to remember her name now. Uh, but she was absolutely fantastic. Everybody loves her. Um, so it's just those simple chords there, and obviously for Melody Part 2 and Melody Part 3, the, the, uh, for melody part to the chords can uh, stay the same. Instead of going for A minor, F, A minor, F, you go A minor, F, A minor, A minor. No major change. And, and then melody part three is A minor and F, then C sharp, F, C major, sorry, and then G major. So that's that. Um, and as I say, there's no, no distorted guitar parts in this at the minute. That's, <coughs> that's going to be Probably a wee video about how we get ready writer's block because at the minute I'm experiencing a wee bit of that with this track. You know, it's it's proven itself difficult to, to rock up a wee bit. Um, my pride and joy though is this bass. The synth bass sound I've got on this is absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> as far as this software goes anyway, I can't wait to get into the, the recording software and fire a poly 6 on it. But I'll play it anyway for you. So part one is simple. Um, dead simple, just two notes there, and we're just pedalling on them, so it sounds like this. Straightforward, two notes, but it's got that nice John Carpenter kind of build up feel to it, and, and I, I quite dig that. Um, let's see Melody Part 2. Is this bit different? So you can hear there the first two bars it goes up um, just let the chords stay in the, the guitar and then the last two bars it's just the same A minor N and F Melody part 3 uh, this is where the really cool bit comes in and this what I decided to do is instead of peddling the notes I decided to accent the, uh, the bass by just playing the first half of the bar. Um, so let's see, I'm playing Melody Part 3. I've got Melody Part 3 up there now. <coughs> no. Right, so play the four bars of Melody Part 3. And that sounds kind of cool, nothing special. It sounds like a, like a laser sword or something. It's cool as hell, it's got a nice kind of saw sound to it. Uh, the drums, anytime I'm writing a song idea, the first thing I do is just start with the basics. 
Um, I'll normally play with the hi-hats for a wee bit um, and then I'll colour that way probably a kick drum or a snare um, sometimes I'll try both you know just to see what they're like so first bar uh, first part of the melody it's pretty much just a snare uh, or the hi-hats and the snare it sounds like this yeah, a bit of solo that actually here we go That was a, a wee bit of kick in there as well. Doesn't sound like anything crazy, but when it's mixed with the music, you hear a big difference. Uh, other than that, um, a couple of tips, a couple of things I do anyway when I'm writing the song is um, these parts up here, so I always write the names of the different sections uh, in here and up uh, in the section area here. You'll see the names of the sections, so it's quite easy to find and locate in this and this kind of gives you a, an overview as well just for structure and so you can see the structure here I've got melody part one and I've got melody part two and then not to be predictable I've got melody part one again before melody part three and what that does is the melody part one is just the basic basic kind of melody and you get a wee bit of colour for melody part two and then what I do is can you reset the palette because melody part three you notes know, go a wee bit higher than part two, and it just kind of gives you that extension, I suppose, of the um, of the distance between the notes, um, and it's like a, a breathy fresh air for melody part one because it's a wee bit further away from it. Um, and what I've done in this, um, obviously, no, no, just go on melody part one, two, three, melody part one, two, three, um, as I've, I've kind of A B C it, so I went melody part one A. A, B, then A again, then C, and then A, B, C again, and, and I think that's quite a cool transition to the sounds it so far. Now this isn't going to be the, this isn't going to be the final structure of the song by no means. This is basically just me spewing out the idea onto something that I can then look at it from an outside perspective. So I'll play the track, and I'll just unmute the drums. I'll play the track. It's only two minutes at the minute. Um, and by no means structured at all but it gives me a basic idea of what I've got to play with um, I might cut some stuff back, I might trim it um, you know, I carve different bits of music out I'd rather do that than add more stuff in um, but then sometimes you need to embellish as well so this is what it sounds like so far
that's it so far and you can probably see I, I pulled up these wee windows here um, <clears throat> these are quite handy as well just um, if you want to see that note, the notes that are available to you um, let's see so if I go to tools scales so this song here is in the scale A minor um, which is basically just C major scale um, except you're focusing on the A minor chord as your tonic um, so being able to see those is quite a handy writing tool um, especially so that's the that's the bass guitar there so if I go just the we'll go with the acoustic guitar just so you can see a six string fretboard and there's all the available notes that you can use and that's only if you're staying in key I think with this song there's probably going to be at least one key change um, I like a bit of modulation so probably going to be two key changes in this but not going to over, overdo it obviously it's, as long as it works um, <clears throat> but even with the piano here um, and the melody you can see the notes when they're getting played because the, the key's highlighting orange here and they shade down a wee bit um, and it's good just to see that because sometimes visually when you're looking at the music as well and um, being played you can see stuff um, see options that you've got that you maybe wouldn't see if you were just sitting there staring at your guitar so that's dead good as well um, I like that um, most of the songs I write are probably at the minute anyway they're predominantly in the, the kind of B minor E minor scales so it's a wee bit of a breath of fresh air going to an A minor but I'm, I'm just not a big fan um, especially the C major scale no black keys no good you know um, but that's the basic song, um, I think that's us cooking up about 26 minutes now, so you're just naughty 26 minutes, so so much for a 15 minute video. Um, time's flew by, and I hope you can learn a wee bit about the process of what a day you get started in this, and hopefully in the next one we'll, we'll, we'll see a wee bit more of this flourishing. Um, and I'm going to maybe just a wee bit more detail about the flourishing, um, expanding the bass line, all on the drums as well. Um, definitely, we need more. We definitely need need more of a chord progression in this, especially if we're going to add in those distorted guitars. And there needs to be some kind of riffage or, or chord progression, and then that takes us away from this basic idea now. Um, so, I that's video log number two. Cheers! Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, or if you just feel like getting your neb in, feel free to leave a a comment on the on the YouTube or on the Facebook. And I'll just minimise that because I like that wee fancy image back there. I'll have a good looking car. Right. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheerio.